Welcome to a new episode of Metal Weekly, the series where we bring you some of the latest albums you may have missed from a previous week. Now we're going into it straight away with the latest And Oceans record. It's called Cosmic World Mother, out now on Season of Mist. Let's give it a listen. Now this is And Oceans. Not Ocean Collective, not Oceans, not Ocean. <laughs> There's a lot of ocean themed, ocean named bands. This is and Oceans. It's really confusing, but it sounds different to all the others, I assure you. This album is quite dissonant, quite frantic, and quite spacey. There's a couple of spacey themed albums on this list as well, as you'll see with the next pick. Bands I'd probably uh, relate these guys to is probably, probably like Ulcerate or probably like Death Spell, but there's a bit more melody in this than those two bands in my opinion. I love those two bands as well, so I'm not giving a diss at them, but this is a bit more melody. Some standout tracks, Five of Swords is intense and aggressive, but my overall favorite is probably the title track. It has kind of like a dancey feeling beat to the chorus and like the climax of the song, which you don't get a lot. You don't get a lot. I don't know if it's just me that feels like it's kind of a dancey beat, but it works really well with the music itself, so and Oceans, the latest record, really fun, really good time, quite intense, but also melodic. Perfect start to the week, to be honest. This is the first one I heard because it came out early. It streamed early on Season of Mist, and I was like, yeah. It didn't disappoint, and it started off the week strong. So, let's move on to the next pick. Next up, we have the band Cryptic Shift and the album Visitations from Enceladus. Out now on Blood Harvest. Let's give it a listen. <laughs> I know I say this all the time in my list, I say this all the fucking time, but this album may be one of my favourites of the month. It might come in top, it might even come into my top 10 albums of the year. I mean, I know we're quite early into the year, but this album is amazing. I mean, when you start an album with a 25 minute song, with robot noises in, frantic fast as hell but clear drumming, intense as hell vocals, crazy different time signatures and riffs. Well, you're starting off on the right foot. Think of this band kind of like Vector, had a baby with blood incantation, that's this band. Very kind of dissonant as well, kind of like um, And Oceans but way just stranger, <laughs> and I love it for that. Yeah, this album's just a blast all the way through, and there's no point in me telling my favorite song, because you know it's gonna be the 25 minute one. I mean, you know, and all the other songs are great as well, but it's not just the music, the album art entices you in as well. It's like, why is he in a blood river? What, what is he doing? What's he got in his hand? What's that monolithic looking thing in the background? What's going on? Great art, great music, amazing album from this week. So next we have Green Carnation with Leaves of Yesteryear. This is out now on Season of Mist. Let's take a listen. Hey, a prog band. We don't get many of those around these parts. And this one piqued my interest because it sounded so similar to like Dream Theater. I'm a big Dream Theater fan. So, sounds good to me. You got long songs, he's got beautiful singing, cool melodies, cool different sections of the songs. Everything just flows so well. Um, it kind of drags down a little bit at the end. I mean, the title track on this one happens to be my favorite. Not the longest one, but the very first one happens to be my favourite on the album, which is rare for a uh, shorter song to beat an epic, like a 15 minute one, which there is a 15 minute song on here, which is still amazing as well. But yeah, that title track kicks off the album straight into gear, and you know what you're getting yourself in for. This album's for you guys who want something a bit more calm, a bit more relaxing in these times, so you can enjoy your hotty chocky and relax with some good ass prog. This delivers. Next up, we have Winter Filleth with Reckoning Dawn. Let's check it out. Now, this album was 
one of my most anticipated of the year. And I tell you what, did not disappoint. Did not disappoint. I'm gonna hype this one up just like I hyped up Cryptic Shift. This is one of the best. I heard this and I was like, instant 10, fucking amazing. Don't care what people say, instant fucking 10. I would go so far as to say this is Winterfell's best album. It is. The melodies are there, catchy as all hell, atmospheric as all hell, and if you didn't know, this is a British black metal band, and they do atmosphere oh, so well. If you love bands kind of like Wolves in the Throne Room, uh, I don't know what I was doing with my hands then, Wolves in the Throne Room, say all, bands like that, you will love this. This is, oh, this is just perfection. It blends beauty and bleakness into one nice, tight, cohesive package, and it's flawless. I've also played this one more than anything else on the list, so, yeah, I mean, hopefully you guys give it a try. You might, you might not be into atmospheric black metal, so you might not like it, but for me, Piece de la Resistance. Amazing album, definitely give it a listen. Next up is Odraza with Resescom, and it is on Gods of War Productions. Give it a whirl. Polish black metal is back with another fine ass release. If you think Winterfellif is a bit too calm for you, you want some more heavy black metal, some more gritty black metal, well this one has you fucking covered. Intense vocals, fast as hell, aggressive as hell, it's got everything you need and it's not just like ah, heavy all the time. It does have its melodic moments as well but it's not a melodic death metal album, it's a black metal album through and fucking through. So. You want some? You got some. I mean, the second song has a tribal-esque melody, which makes you want to just go to war. So it's not all just like intense as hell, but most of it is, and it's all awesome. Amazing album. Polish black metal can't do much wrong, can they? They always just knock it out of the park. So yeah, amazing band, give it a listen. Next up we have Nalgafar with Sarah Cloth on Century Media Records. Check a listen. Black metal heavy week, isn't it? This is on the more theatrical scale compared to some of the ones I'll talk about. It's not as intense, it's not as atmospheric, it is more theatrical, more on the lines of like Demu or Dark Funeral kind of black metal. That's not to give it a disservice because the album's fucking great and I love those bands as well. It's just, that's that kind of, it's, the, it's that kind of black metal, you know? It, it's that kind of black metal. Now the sound of the album out of the way, the songs kick ass. You have catchy ass riffs like in Horns and Cry of the Seferim. You have awesome theatrical vocals which set the spooky mood like in track Poison of the Soul. And you even have Fast and Furious typical black metal song, so this is a very well-versed black metal album. It has everything, caters to everyone, but it is on the more, you know, fun side of things compared to some of the other ones I was talking about. Still a great album, loved it, which is why it's on this recommendation list. I'm not gonna put albums I don't like on here. Still a great album, give it a listen. Finally, we have Forgotten Tomb and their album Nihilistic Estrangement on Argonian record, Argonian? <laughs> Heading into Scarring Boys, Argonia Records. Yeah, check it out. I know what you're saying. More black metal, he's gone off his rocker. And yeah, this is very black metal heavy this week, but that's just the best albums are. They just happen to be of that caliber, of that genre this week. This is another fantastic black metal race, but it's not just black metal, it's not theatrical black metal, it's not melodic black metal, it's not evil, just intense black metal. This is doomy kind of black metal. You know, there's some songs on here which have a very doomy atmosphere to them. Like the title track on this record, which is an ethereal masterpiece, 
which sends you to an idyllic location and just drowns you in the waters of sorrowed life. So, you know, basically, it's pretty fucking good. A lot of the other songs have kind of a black and roll feel to them. Kind of like Immortal. Just like the song Distrust Cubed, that has a very kind of black and roll feel to it. So, so many different, again, kind of like Nagelfar, uh, different sounds to this album, but it is a more dreary album, more darker, more depressing album than Nagelfar, because that's more like, ooh, spooky. This is more like, uh. So many different sounds on this album, but it's a lot bleaker, a lot darker, and I enjoy it more for that. So this is one of the ones I highly recommend as well. So that does it for this episode of Metal Weekly. Hopefully you find some albums you enjoyed out of these. Let me know in the comments below what your favourite album is from past week or the past two weeks or however many weeks you want to tell me. Just let me know in the comments below and we'll see you again on another Metal Weekly.